Hello, this is from the workshop where I do some of the metal work that's required. So I, I usually get these, uh, uh, I think that's Adam Hall boxes and they um, they come without any holes or anything and um, they fit these Pushman uh, form plates. Uh, as you see here, the, the, uh, the boards are mounted on top of each other, upside down. I've drilled some holes in the bottom uh, here and put put um, uh, just uh, M M3 screws through them. Uh, I did a little countersunk, uh, I countersunk them on the other side so they won't scratch the other units in the rack. And you have this little standoff there. So my plan here is uh, yeah, it's a bit of ghetto rig here but it's gonna be uh, with this uh, M3 thread here and uh, um, the board's gonna clamp in between the, the washer shears. So I do that on both boards. Uh, then I've I've done the <coughs> the holes for the uh, power inlet. Uh, with uh, these are the ugliest things I make. I hate seeing them because it's it's just uh, difficult to do a, a tidy work job with them. So this is a um, uh, this is pretty big thing with a switch and a fuse and a inlet. So uh, cut this out with uh, the angle grinder and uh, uh, drill the holes in the corners, drill hole, holes for the mounting. Uh, I'm just about to put the screw holes in for the, the notch. Uh, when making these holes, I highly recommend using a, I don't know what it's called in, in, uh, in English actually, it's a stance in Swedish, uh, that, uh, a punch I think, uh, that punches these, uh, these holes here. Uh, makes them super clean. It's impossible to do uh, such large holes uh, that cleanly with um, with a drill. Uh, also, I highly recommend using using one of these uh, uh, quick punches to make the you, you push it down on the on the surface and it makes a little a little dent that the drill is supposed to go in. So since everything is pretty is is pretty tight in here, so it's important that the holes uh, go in properly. So. So that's the idea and I'm going to have the power lint coming in here and the idea is to put the, um, uh, the grammar screw around here and have the, uh, the, the PC unit mounted on the back here. I won't put holes in it because I want to see if it worked before since I haven't tried the, the switch mode uh, PCUs earlier. So I'm, I'm going to make sure that they work before I drill holes for to mount them. So. Uh, yep, so that's where we're at at the moment. So here we are, first board mounted up. Um, done a final check, everything looks cool. So um, uh, now we're gonna turn it up with power and uh, see if anything starts to um, start to smoke. We're looking especially at this here filtering part of the first components of the PSU. Some of these resistors might be uh, might be smoking if it draws too much uh, too much juice. So let's let's go. Oh, so I did not have the mains on on the back. Turn that on. Do it again. Yeah, so we're getting nothing from the light here. So that tells me probably then the mains fuse here has blown. So uh, might be a short or something. So we're gonna have to research that. Hello again, friends. I am afraid I've been a bit lax in my duties and I have not been uh, Keeping up with what's been happening as I promised. I'm sorry about that. So I think last time um, I had a problem with uh, uh, 
the power circuit is going out, uh, blowing a fuse directly. I had two weak fuses, uh, 150 milliamps, and uh, the draw on the on the power supply is 300. So I uh, I up those, and now everything is working as uh, suspected, uh, as as uh, expected on the, those parts. So uh, when I turn it off, I get lights here, and everything is working fine. So uh, Next problem I ran into is that this channel 2 worked perfectly, sounded great, worked exactly as uh, expected, it tested all the, uh, all the um, different uh, filters out and everything worked great. Um, this channel 1 did not. Uh, I had a really weird like minus voltage on the um, the ground rails um, and really no no voltage at, uh, no no positive voltage at all uh, so no sound going through and just yeah uh, just voltage is uh, everywhere where it shouldn't be on the switches and pots and stuff like that so uh, that was a problem and uh, I finally tracked it down to a this little guy here let's see if I can zoom in the race diode there it's a 4148 diode um, this guy had broken and left just the open line um, so um, no worries took care of that but problem uh, uh, problem was that uh, when I powered it up everything worked fine I had the, the, the bypass light works and everything as expected, but now I had voltages on the in and out pins on the OP amps here, and um, it's been a bit of a trouble to track down, and that was because the OP amps were broken. So um, uh, I, th I have blown two of those guys in that attempt. I what I should have done, and this is. Part of why I'm doing this video, so so you can get a, some tips from it. What I should have done is not plug this in before powering up, and measure uh, the sockets for the correct uh, uh, voltages. That would have saved me a lot of time because I would immediately notice that I don't get the correct voltages on the uh, the supply pins, and that in turn would save had saved, saved me a lot of time to track down. Uh, faulty ICs. Uh, so at least two of these uh, are blown. I suspect this guy over here might also be gone. Uh, I'm just gonna test that out now by plugging it in and see if I get the same weird vo um, high voltage or higher voltage on the on the in and out pins. So um, lesson learned. Uh, measure the ICs before you jam anything in there. As, uh, as usual, I'm I'm just running this, and praying I don't touch anything scary. Uh, I would not advise you doing this. Uh, I do this all the time. I would not advise anyone else doing this. Uh, I'm I'm playing with my own, own life, perhaps with all this uh, mains power here, but uh, it's the way it is. Um, so there we have it, and. Uh, now you know, and hopefully, I I didn't have any spares of these, so I ordered these. So they should show up any day. So hopefully next time we we talk, I will have uh, new opiums and we will have a running EQ. So here we are again, and uh, the new opiums plop down, and I found another broken one. So, um, so those three here are now replaced. Um, I don't know the significance because of, of these three on the sides blowing. I don't know if there's some reason for it, but um, I just want to let you know if it might help you at some point. Uh, I realized I haven't even I haven't really shown you how I mounted the the weirdo dual gang pots. So this is what I end up with. It looks uh, pretty crap from here, but it works works hundred percent. So. Um, just wires to, 
Twitch lag and uh, then uh, wires to the bottom of the PCB. Uh, I tried to do the the pin thing uh, with pins from the from the little lugs here, but really really didn't. Uh, it was a lot of work. It didn't really look great either. So so this is what I what I ended up with. So here is the completed unit. Everything is uh, done and working except a little part on the back side with labeling. Otherwise everything is running smoothly. And I thought it was really funny to put uh, Neve style knobs on it. Super cool joke. I told my my partner she didn't uh, she didn't get the joke. Uh, and this is what I have left. It's the just the labeling of the ins and outs on the back. Rare on switch like this. And it lights up. If I turn on the power on the jack that is so. Feels really nice. Uh, looks uh, looks okay. Looks sort of at like a 80s drama unit or something. Uh, alpha pots are feel really good. Clear and clean, nice layout. And this is what we have beneath the chassis, uh, the the top chassis. So uh, not much in there. Uh, I could have done with a much uh, shorter casing, but I use these standard um, casings that are pretty cheap and, and decent quality. So they they are they are at these dimensions, and I I really don't have the the clip. So this is what we have to look at on the inside. The casing could be much smaller and I probably was just like half length and I would have mounted the, the power supply on the side. It wouldn't be as bulky, but uh, they have this, this length and I don't have the, the clip. Well, this is how it looks inside. Not much to talk about there, just standard shielded cabling to the, the outs. I did this thing to make sure, sure the boards were a bit more stable. They are rock solid now, so just a um, clamp on each of the boards uh, that is uh, set in the bottom of the casing. The casing could be much shorter, but I I just couldn't be bothered to, to do any modifications. I just use these off-the-shelf uh, Adam Hall casings. They are, they are very cheap and, and decent quality, so they work for me. So uh, Not much in there. Could probably hide some, I don't know, chicken sandwiches or something if you need. And uh, this is the switch mode power supply. Works great here, actually. So I'm happy to report that. Might be that I build another rack. I have another one of these supplies laying around, so... Uh, fun build, not much... Uh, not much of the expensive parts, only the, the switches, which I, have, which I have loads of now, and... and uh, the, the dual gang, weirdo pots. So, that's it, and next time uh, I'm gonna have the final video where I do some... Um, some audio tests with it.